Welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. My name is Cal Evans. Nomad PHP Lightning Talks are 10 minute talks that give a high level overview or an in depth look at a small portion of a PHP related topic. Lightning Talks are a great way for new speakers to build their speaking resume and for long time speakers to test drive new talk ideas. If you'd like to give a Lightning Talk, email joe at joe at nomadphp.com. Right now, our special guest is Sammy Powers, and he will talk about all the new new Facebook PHP SDK 4.1. Afterwards, please make sure you visit Joined In and leave Sammy some feedback. Okay, Sammy, take it away. Thanks so much, Cal. This is all about the Facebook PHP SDK version 4.1. All right, I do not work for Facebook. Uh, I just want to get that out of the way. And the goal of this lightning talk is to get an overview of the Facebook PHP SDK. There's a lot to cram into 10 minutes, so let's see how much we can cram into your brain. All right, so let's start off by just kind of looking at the brief history, starting with version 3, um, full of bugs, spaghetti string code, no good. Uh, 4.0 came out last year, rewritten by Bosco Morado, had a lot of crazy great improvements. And then 4.1 hasn't come out yet. It's coming out very soon. This, there's a feature freeze, and the documentation is updated in GitHub, but uh, it won't be released until they officially push the documentation to the documentation website. But the the jump from 4.0 to 4.1 is huge, as big as it was from 3 to 4. So don't let the version numbers confuse you. They're totally different SDKs. So let's do a quick question, though. Do we even need to use the PHP SDK? Well, let's take a look at it. Facebook login uses OAuth 2.0. So if you already have an OAuth 2.0 client like the PHP League, um, they have a OAuth 2.0 client and a provider that ties into Facebook, as well as the new Socialite plugin that uh, comes equipped with Laravel 5. If all you need to do is log a user in, grab an email address, and you're done, then you really don't need to use the PHP SDK. But if you want to integrate deeper into the Facebook development platform, you'll need to interface with sign requests a lot of times, or upload files, or do batch requests, or do advanced paginations, or what if you wanted to get your, your data back in the form of a collection or something. The Facebook PHP SDK handled all that stuff for you, and it's really handy. So if you need to implement it, how do you do that? Well, with Composer, yay, I won't get into too much detail about this, but as I mentioned before, it's still in development mode as of today. And one little thing, it doesn't follow Simver, so I know you're, you're rolling your eyes right now, but there's the tilde operator. We want to use three version numbers here, uh, not two like we normally would because it doesn't follow Simver, so don't bring in anything that will break your stuff. So let's see how you use it once you've got it installed. So there's, this is this the super service class is what I call it. It's at Facebook slash Facebook, and this ties all of the components of the SDK together into one nice little API. For this talk, we're going to use the FB variable to represent the instantiation of this super service. So that's what we're going to use for the examples. So what does it do? The Facebook super service, ha service handles all of the configuration for like our app ID and our app secret. Um, it's a factory for generating helpers and entities, and we're going to look at what those are in just a second. It helps making HTTP requests and responses, and it's a container to inject custom dependencies that help us tie the SDK into our web framework. So here's an example of how we would instantiate the super service. We send in an array of configuration in the constructor with the app ID and the app secret. Those are the two required variables. Now, a little secret here is that you want to keep your app secret secret. Um, it's very important to keep that thing secure, so a better um, thing to do would be to store that information in environment variables. That's kind of a common practice. And out of the box, the new PHP SDK will actually fall back to these two environment variables. So if you have these set with your app ID and the app secret, you can instantiate a new super service without sending in any configuration at all, which is kind of nice. So let's talk about authenticating the users. So Facebook login is just OAuth 2.0, as I pointed out before. And the way we do that with the Facebook SDK is we use this thing called the redirect login helper. And you can use that, you can grab an instance of that from the super service with the git redirect login helper method. Once you get an instance of that, you can generate an authorization URL with the git login URL method and send in, as an argument, the callback, where you want the user to be redirected after they approve or de deny your app. And you show that link to the user, they click on it, and in the callback, all you gotta do is use this little handy method here, get access token, and it'll return an access token if all goes well. So now that you have an access token, you're logged in. Yay, the user's logged in, you've authenticated the app. Now what do you do with it? Well, I recommend throwing it in a session. 
um, and then every time they come back to the website, just grab a new new access token, throw it in a session again. It's very rare that you would need to throw it in a database unless you're making requests on behalf of the user at like three in the morning with a cron job or something. I get asked that question a lot. So um, let's take a look at how you would make requests and responses with the PHP SDK, the brand new one. Well, we got git post and delete. Those are what's supported with the graph API, not put and patch. It's not a RESTful API, so the SDK also does not support those HTTP verbs. But you'll notice the git has a git method, post has a post, post method, and delete also has a corresponding delete method. It's pretty simple. So how does it work? All three of those methods do this. They generate an, a Facebook request entity. They send that entity to the Facebook client. The client will translate that into an HTTP request and send it to the Graph API. The Graph API gets really excited, sends back the response. The Facebook client does some crazy stuff, and then it kind of ends up with a Facebook response. And that's what you actually get back when you use these methods, is a Facebook response entity. So let's take a look at what this would look like if we make a simple get request to the Graph API using the new PHP SDK. Well, we use the method get with our Facebook super service, and we send to this endpoint, slash 123. So we'll just assume that's a user node, and we also send in an access token with that. So this is, say so it could be a user access token or something else, um, but what if uh, we didn't want to send an access token with every request? So there's this method called set default access token. That is the fallback access token that we'll, we can set so that we don't need to set it every time we send a request. That's kind of handy. So once that response comes back, it will be encoded into a space Facebook response entity, and we can play with that. So let's see what we can get with this response data that we got back. Since it's an HTTP response, we get things like get status uh, code and things like that, it's things that would exist on an HTTP uh, response. There's one called get body, so you just get like a plain old string of whatever graph the graph API returns, but it often returns in the, uh, the response in the form of JSON. So why not try get decoded body? Because that will replace a nice little plain old PHP array. What if we wanted to take it further and get the response back in the form of a collection or for these graph nodes that, that graph is, the graph API is returning? Graph nodes, you ask? Why, yes, Leonard Euler, thanks for asking. This is a terminology that comes from graph theory, which is this, this subgenre of discrete mathematics um, all by this guy, Leonard Euler. So here's the flying fast version of graph theory. You've got dots and lines, right? There's a dot, there's a line. The dots aren't called dots, they're called nodes. The lines aren't called lines, they're called edges. What are these? Well, the nodes represent real world things that in the, in the actual world, these are nodes. And the relationship between these two things are edges, all right? Now, in, in the Graph API, it uses graph theory in the back end. So, check it out. Graph calls nodes like a user, a, a, a photo, a comment. Those are all nodes. And the relationship between those nodes are edges, all right? So, just something to look out for. So, when we want a graph node, how do we pull in a graph node to the SDK? Well, believe it or not, the SDK calls these graph objects. And we use, uh, I don't know why, but the you get... Uh, a graph object or graph node using this method from the Facebook response entity, get graph object. Now, heads up, since graph object is a horrible name for something that's actually a graph node, this is going to change in 4.2, <laughs> a big breaking change, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen, and that's going to be get graph node, and it's going to return a graph node, not a graph object, all right? Uh, by the way, these graph nodes are extended as collections very similar to the ones that are running Laravel. If you've ever worked with Laravel collections, it'll be very familiar to you. Um, there's a lot more to talk about graph nodes, but we're, we don't have time, so I'm going to move on to graph edges. Now, if you remember, graph edges are relationship between more than one node. So, for example, on the graph API, if we were to hit the endpoint me slash photos, photos returns um, a list of photo nodes. So this the photo edge. So I send a git request, it returns a Facebook response. So I might be tempted to do what we did last time, right? Use that method, get graph objects. But uh, remember, we can't do this because we're getting a list of nodes back. So in the SDK, we access the edge from this method called get graph list, which, uh, yeah, that's also another horrible name to name something that's actually an edge. So heads up, in 4.2, that's probably going to be called get graph edge. Just little gotchas. Hey, this is Facebook. We'll change things all the time. It's all good. So just get used to this. Um, we just got to get used to all things changing all the time on this. But what this is, this graph uh, list, it helps us to paginate over data. So we can use the Facebook super service um, to go next next or previous, and we just send in that list. It'll return a list for us. We don't have to do any HTTP requests. It'll do all that stuff for us and return another list. So that's really handy. 
All right, let's look at a quick example of a post. In this post request, uh, we post something to a user's timeline. Uh, timeline. It's very straightforward. We use the post method, send in the endpoint and the data, and it's on there if we have the right permissions. That is pretty simple. What about delete? Is it harder? Actually, it's even easier. Just use the delete method and send it the ID you want to delete. It's really, really simple. So what if we wanted to integrate this really deeply into our web framework? Well, there's a couple of options, but the one I just wanted to point out uh, really quickly is the persistent data handler. Now, this is the thing that actually stores uh, data into a session or persistent data. And by default, the SDK is going to try to save it in a native session. So you want to overwrite this with whatever your web framework uses, say you use Redis or whatever. There's a persistent data interface and you just create an instance of that and send it in and it'll be using your your version instead of the native uh, PHP version. So this is all um, some other stuff that you can integrate with but we don't have time to go over that uh, but just know that you can really deeply integrate this with uh, not only Facebook but also your web framework. And I'm going to show you two quick examples of file uploads. File uploads can be tricky but look with the SDK say I wanted to upload a photo all I need to do is generate um, this request, a post request, the me slash feed, that's my timeline. I send in my data and look at the source key there. I'm using the super service to um, generate this, this entity with the file to upload method. And I just send it the path of my file, my photo, and it'll do all of the heavy lifting for, for me. And check out this video example. Same thing, all I'm doing, uh, using a method video to upload, I send it to the path of my video, and there's actually a lot that goes on to upload a video to Facebook, uh, the, the Graph API, and uh, the SDK does a ton of work for you, and it makes it super laughably easily easy to do that. Last thing I'm gonna talk about, getting involved. If you've been wanting to get involved in an open source project, I highly recommend checking out on GitHub, the Facebook PHP SDK version 4. Um, check out all these merged pull requests. The purple means merged. Look at that. Lots of merged stuff, lots of activity, and it's all because of this guy, Fosco Murado at Facebook. He's like the head guy over there to, to head this thing up. Uh, he's super, super, super open to pulling in feedback and things from the community. So thank you, Fosco. Last thing I want to kind of talk about, or second to last thing, remember, remember Facebook D-Day is coming up April 30th. Uh, 2015, that's like next month. I have a, an entire lightning talk on this right here on Nomad PHP. Go check it out on the lightning talk section. You'll see my face again to see what, what's going to change, what's going to break. And finally, Facebook Developer Conference coming up next week, March 25th and 26th. Um, they're going to be streaming it live from developers.facebook.com. I'm going to be there. I'll say hi, Mom, to the, to, to the Internet. So hopefully you'll be watching me. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be on there. All right, so that is it. Wow, Crash Course, Sammy K. Powers, that's me. I'm the host of the PHP Roundtable, co-organizer of the Chicago PHP User Group. I'm an avid West Coast swing dancer. And if you're interested, uh, definitely check out sammyk.me for lots of blogging this about Facebook development stuff. And now I need to take a breath. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sammy. That was awesome.